pray you're enjoying the Sabbath. Let me paint a picture for you. I want to tell you a story. Imagine showing up. Actually, it's my life. <laughs> Imagine showing up to your first church fireside in jeans and a flannel shirt, ready for a campfire, <laughs> complete with all the fixings for s'mores. Yep, that's me. My stake center, though, welcomed me with open arms, and I quickly learned that firesides are a bit more than indoorsy. Today, I'm leaving my first temple dedication ever. It was an incredible experience, but I have to say, and it's incredible how converts like myself have these unique perspectives on things that those are sacred experiences. It's not what I expected. I gotta be honest, because I had an image in my mind of something else, I didn't expect what I was walking into today. So converts definitely see things from a different angle. As a, new, as a newer convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I was baptized in August 2017. I was often puzzled by certain terms or practices, and I want to share those with you today. And let me know where you're tuning in from. I'd love to hear from you, or if you have any comments. For instance, when I was first got baptized, multiple families invited me to FHE. I thought, what on earth is an FHE? They explained, it's a family home evening. And I had no idea what that was. I was like, what on earth is a family home evening? Thank you so much, Sandy. You are awesome. Um, that means more than you guys know. I was like, what on earth is a, is a family home evening? So I, I guess there's a lot of jargon to learn. And I want to debunk some of that tonight. So if you have some friends that may be converts or may see things a little differently than how those that grow up in the church are used to these acronyms. So for instance, um, we talked about the family home evening. I was initially assumed, so I initially assumed temple dedications took place outside because that's where I would usually see pictures of the apostles shaking hands. Little did I know, it's a private ceremony with locked doors. That was really cool. I gotta say, being at the stake center and having them lock us in, I felt like, wow, and happened to show your temple recommend to be able to enter the stake center to watch the, um, the dedication. I'm going to get into that. It was breathtaking. It was absolutely breathtaking. But my point is, is, so let me go back to this. I initially assumed that temple dedications were done outdoors. So a little did I know that it was practiced indoors. But there I was today listening to all the speakers. I felt they were speaking directly to me, especially the temple president and the matron. When Elder Gong addressed us, I got goosebumps. I could testify. I was like, wow, I needed this. I needed this experience. Another vivid memory is from when I was stranded in Utah with a Stake Relief Society president and her husband during the pandemic lockdown. We watched the April 2020 General Conference together and President Nelson announced the Hosanna shout with white handkerchiefs. I was too embarrassed to admit, this was four years ago, I didn't know what that meant. But let me tell you, Today, waving that white handkerchief was both confusing and exhilarating. So it was really amazing to be a part of that collective energy where everybody's doing it. So learning this new slang and acronyms isn't easy, but I gotta say it's worth it 150%. It's like my first day attending a sacrament meeting. During the opening prayer, everybody folded their arms and bowed their heads and went, Dush! 
the first impression that I got was back off. Like, leave me alone. Because I was used to doing this, or I was used to doing this, or, or this from the Catholic days, I guess you could say. So it's all, you know, so I considered it to be rude because I was like, oh my gosh. But now I understand. Okay, let me go get to that. I was used to making signs or crosses or generally folding my hands. When I saw them folding their arms and bowing, I thought it was a way of saying, stay back. Don't talk to me. Now I understand it's about reverence. So this experience has strengthened my testimony of the temple's importance, honoring our ancestors and the significance of our salvation. As Doctrine and Covenants chapter one or section 128 verse 15 states, and now my dearly beloved brethren and sisters, let me assure you that these are principles in relation to the dead and the living that cannot be lightly passed over as pertaining to our sal pertaining to our salvation. Close quote. But it goes beyond that. My testimony now includes a deeper understanding of the scriptures from the Holy Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. For instance, Malachi 4, 5 through 6 says, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of of the faithful to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers close quote that brings comfort the this speaks to the eternal sacrifices of family bonds and temple work or excuse me significance could be sacrifice depending on what direction you want to go in but it's the significance of eternal family bonds and uh, service. Let's not forget one of my favorite one of my favorite moments in the scripture in the Book of Mormon where Alma the Younger testifies in Alma 36 verse 24 chapter 36 verse 24 ye and from the time until now I have labored without ceasing that I might bring souls unto repentance, that I might bring them of the exceeding joy of which I did, that they might also be born of God and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Close quote. These experiences and scriptures have deepened my understanding and appreciation for our faith. This reminds me of the journey we are all on, striving to draw closer to God and to one another. That's what it's all about. So, have you been to a temple dedication? And what are your thoughts about what I shared about being a convert and learning all this new jargon? I would love to hear your feedback. I want to thank you for watching and I want to see if there's any comments from you because I opened this up for comments in the beginning and I'm going to go through this before it gets dark and I'm going to go and study more scripture. I'm going to watch The Chosen tonight. I love it. I haven't seen the last season. Hey books, a dreamer of books. It's good to see you. you always make me smile when I see you. Margaret, thank you so much for that badge. You don't have to do that on the Sabbath. That is so sweet. Um, well, it looks like I don't have any comments. I'm just waving to people. So I'm going to close this with my testimony. I can testify that I know that I chose this life in the pre-existence. 
and I feel it. I feel that I the challenges, the challenges and trials that I've gone through or that anyone's gone through is only going to make us stronger. I know that when it becomes tough and it becomes hard, I rely on my ward family, my ministering brothers, my stake family, or now my, all my extended family in Utah, all of you all over the world. I know that when we rely on each other but have a strong testimony in Jesus, not man because man's not perfect, I feel closer to our Savior. I know when I provide service to others, it brings service to me. And I am so grateful that today I was able to attend this open house because I learned so much and I'm still learning. I'm still green and there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to mispronounce biblical names now and then or it's just be transparent and true and people will know your true intent in here. And I say that as my testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you for joining. Let me scroll to the bottom, make sure I didn't miss any comments. Oh, we have quite a few actually. Um, we have DIC says, I did. I thank you for sharing this love and light. You are so special too. My friend Betsy says, Dennis, I love your testimony and I am so glad you got to experience a temple dedication. It's beautiful, peaceful experience. Yes, it was. My friend Amanda, okay, she's got a great YouTube channel where she plays the piano and I just love listening to her stuff, sometimes on repeat. You gotta go check her out. Her screen name is Amanda. Um, you can see it, it's right in there. But she says, DC was from my stake center, the DC Temple. Oh, and then now Richmond, Virginia. I just heard you had your, your dedication a while ago, so that's awesome. Congratulations on Richmond as your temple. Uh, let me see. I, um, Margaret says you are well I'm gonna throw this back at you sister Margaret you are an incredible soul don't forget that our friend C L E says you are great I'm reading your book aw thank you I have listened to your podcast with Sean really that was a long time ago so I did Sean's podcast in Layton Utah and that was in 2000, actually it was January 2020, I recorded his podcast. I love Sean's podcast. Uh, you listen to Sean's podcast a couple of times. I rely on my Ward family a lot. Stay with us. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> we have the truth. Yes, we do. And if anything, all the contention I see out there is reminding me that we are in the true gospel. My friend Michael says, so happy for you, Dennis. Well, brother, I'm happy for you too. I can't wait to see you. Um, my friend Margaret, thank you for sharing your testimony. Absolutely. So I'm going to be driving to Colorado um, for a few days. I'm attending an endowment and I'm gonna share that story for you when I'm driving I'm gonna do it on my YouTube channel I'm gonna be talking about um, my uber driver that um, just is getting his endowment and it's just amazing this is two and a half years ago I met him only once my uber driver my taxi driver and he asked me to be a part of it 
and it's a great story but I'm going to save that for another one because I just don't feel like it needs to be shared today anyway you guys have a great night thank you for listening and God bless I love you and most importantly so doesn't God and why does my screen look fuzzy I hope it's not one of those filters again I mess these up all the time I don't know how to do what's this button oh that's to invite people to join oops oh I have a question box there's no questions yet little airplane and what's this button do it um oh it says request to join again I thought I already hit that what's this one? Oh, it says invite to join I don't know the difference I'm still learning <laughs> I'm lucky I don't um, like butt dial more people on my iPhone because that's something I'm notorious for doing <laughs> anyway have a great day everybody and enjoy the rest of your Sabbath <laughs>